Now I feel awkward, the camera's on. <laughs> it's totally fine, just get your wiggles out. I'm gonna get my wiggles out. What do you want to do with your hair? Okay, I kind of want to be a little more risky this time. And, because we had the side cut and the undercut, I want to connect them. You know, it's going to cut to go all the way back now. I want to go all the way back and connect. So that when, like, I do this, it'll just be all, like, one thing. Okay, so are we just talking about, like, this little piece of hair yeah. right here? Mm hmm Okay, cool. Because it's the only thing kind of taking that away. I feel like my hair is long enough now to where it'll... Because we didn't cut yeah, it last time with? because it was too short. Um, obviously, same thing, issues happening, flip Flipping out. Flipping out of the bottom. Mm -hmm. So I want to cut that to where... Like just where my undercut ends, I want my hair to like hang nicely there. Same type of texture that we usually do, but you know how I asked for bangs last time. You're over it now. I'm over it. You want? You want? I didn't you like want it. Let that yeah, out. I just want to let it kind of grow out. So it, they're not an issue right now. I don't feel like I need to blend them in or anything. I think they're pretty easy to hide. But um, yeah, those are the two things that I wanted. So on the, the short part, like the undercut part, are you trying to go like like clipper buzzed short or do you still want it kind of soft and pretty? So that, I think clipper buzz part on the under, I, but I don't uh, know on how. On the back side? Yeah. Okay. But I don't know how like. But then like, like that here would be you want stupid. It more soft and kind of wispy. Yes and no. Like I'm kind of willing to take risks, but I'm so used to like having that because I like that ear. Yeah, the like pieces the hair in front pieces, of the ear. But I don't want to like do a buzz because I really like your soft scissor work. I think that it's great. So if you think. Yeah, we could do a taper like just in the back and then maybe even put hard lines on this part. Okay. And like you wouldn't see them when your hair's down. Sure. But when you put your hair up, you would see them. Okay. And then in the front, leave it soft. Kind of give you like the best of all the worlds. Okay. Yeah, do what, do what you do. I mean, I trust you. Tight. And then as far as like the overall length on top. Um, so, like you mentioned, this back corner here, we yeah. kind of need the length from the top to create that shape. Yeah. Other than where we need to keep the length right there, do you want to, like, take it down in, in the front at all? No. Or do you feel I mean, I, I kind of want, I want at least, like, an inch off everywhere. Oh, really? Like, not ev not everywhere, but off the back. And then the front, I don't want it to be, like, an angled thing. I kind of just want it. You want it to, like, follow your jawline? I want it to follow my jawline, maybe, like, right. Okay. Like, two. Yeah. Cool, fun. Do you want to read those questions? Yeah. Someone asked if I want to do any other hair color other than blonde. Did you just get your hair colored? I did. I just came yeah. straight from getting it done. That's why it's wet. <laughs> so I think this is the thing I've been like contemplating for a while. I don't want to do anything permanent, but it, like, I always tell Allie, it'd be really nice to just have a color for, like, two weeks and then have it go away. Like pink or something? Yeah. I think if I were to do anything, it would be, like, a peach color. Not too pink. But, I don't know. I don't know if I could see you with that. With pink? Well, every time I see you, you're wearing either black or, like, mm. army green. That's true. Those are the only two colors I own. So this question got asked a lot and people asked, how would you describe this haircut to a stylist? Oh, see, I, I read that a few times and <laughs> for me, that's a little bit of a loaded question. I mean, there's, it opens up a real can of worms. The thing is I get, I get a lot of people messaging me, not regarding this exact haircut, but just in general asking for you know, how do I tell my stylist or barber to cut this? And the thing is, it's if you've tried to get this haircut and it didn't turn out right, it's not because you used the wrong terms to ask mm. for it. It's because you're going to the wrong hair cutter. Mm. Uh, the best way to ask for a haircut is with a photo and then sit and talk about what you like and don't like about the photo. And hopefully the hairdresser will be able to help you readjust your expectations to what will work for you. A common question I get is, what length do I ask for? And the thing is, Mm -hmm. I don't have a ruler. No hairdresser pulls out a ruler and goes, okay, three inches here. This is my ruler. Here's her jawline. Here's her occipital bone. And so everything is built off of the actual head. So, yeah, asking, you know, how, how do I describe this exact haircut and, and hoping to find something like lengths and, and buzzwords and angles and things. That's like saying, 
you know, I saw Ryan Reynolds wearing cool pants, and I want my pants to fit me like his, so how much should I tell my tailor <laughs> to take off? It's, you know, it's got to be a customized, personalized thing, and so I think if you've gone to get a haircut and it didn't turn out just the way you wanted it, it's probably not, it, I'll say this, I'm not going to put it on the, on the client to say, you asked for the wrong haircut the wrong way. Yeah. It, there is a lack of communication there uh, on some part, I, and I don't know exactly who to blame, it's probably a different scenario in every situation, but pictures are the best. And Would you like suggest doing like 360 pictures, like front, back, side to side? Anything you can get. Okay. And the other thing is when you bring in the picture, be aware of what you like and don't like about it and be open to hear whether or not it'll work the way you hope it will. So for an example is I get a lot of guys who will bring me a picture of like, I don't know, a dude with a long undercut, but the top is just spilling and cascading over down the sides of his, mm -hmm. of his head. Mm -hmm. And he goes, I want this, but like way shorter on top. And I'm like, if we go way shorter on top, it won't spill and fall. It won't yeah. act that way. And to the point that, you know, they want to go so much shorter on top that it no longer does what the hair in the photo is doing. So I have to ask them, what about the photo do you like? And they go, well, I like that it's falling and spilling everywhere. And I said, then you need the mm -hmm. top longer. Uh, so pay attention to what you like about it. Another good one is I get a lot of pictures of the Peaky Blinders guy. And people will bring in his photo and say, I want this fade. And then I, I cover up the three-piece suit. Yeah, And I right? cover up Cillian Murphy's face because he's beautiful. Right. And I just show them the bowl haircut that he has. And I go, do you want a bowl haircut? And they go... No. Yeah, no. So really, they want a freaky suit and they want to look like they want the whole Murphy, picture, yeah. But they don't have that. It's not them. Yeah, for sure. So somebody asked, would you consider this haircut an asymmetrical pixie or a bob? It's honestly, it's a little bit of everything. It's like an amalgamation of every yeah. of every trendy haircut right now. It's like the undercut pixie bob, the asymmetrical undercut pixie bob. There we go. Yeah, I think that's what. I really liked Pixies and I really liked Bob's and I wanted best of both worlds. But then when we first cut my hair, we just kind of did like a really tapered back. Yeah. And the we were kind of trying the to Kate whatever yeah, you didn't want. <laughs> the Kate Gosling. Yeah. Um, I think we were just trying to figure it out and like, sure, I brought him a picture and was like, I want this. But then on me, it looked different. And I think once you start getting your hair cut, you figure out what you like and what you don't like about it. And then that's where I had like, the problem with the flip out on the bottom and I was like no just I want the undercut taken off so that I don't have the flip out anymore because I have such thick hair and because of my thickness I think that I was able to cut off a lot of the underneath part. Yeah, I, I think working with the same stylist for a few haircuts in a row is helpful too. Yeah, yeah for uh, sure. One of the first questions I ask Chloe every time is what's bothering you about your hair and then I can make adjustments from the last time. Um, would you suggest an undercut or side cuts to somebody who has thin hair? That's a case by case thing. Uh, if, if somebody came in here with really fine hair and they, they absolutely wanted the undercut, what I would do is part out some hair on the bottom and pull it aside and clip it out of the way and let the hair on top hang and just see how that hair mm -hmm. looks without the hair on the bottom adding to the weight. And if it looked fine, I would take out a little bit more and I would see how much I could get away with clipping back before the hair hanging on top wasn't enough to look good. And uh, so again, going back to like, there's no ruler that you use, it's you look at the hair and see how the hair looks. And if there's enough hair that you can undercut it to here and this much hair hangs heavily, sure, undercut it to here, but if there's enough hair that you can only undercut it up to here and do it very mm -hmm. low like that. So this person had never had an undercut before, but they took a big wrist and they cut it like, like what I have. Um, her and her stylist are taking it slowly especially with the undercut at the, undercut at the nape by the neck area. The area is much smaller than mine, she said, but she's not liking the way her hair is falling. Um, it seems really thick there. Would you suggest trimming it again or letting it go until her next cut? Definitely don't trim it yourself, but it, kind of the same answer that I, that I mentioned as far as undercutting with finer hair is you, you have to look at the way the hair is falling. Uh, you guys in the video will see in a minute that after I get the basic structure done on her haircut here, I'm going to push it like multiple times and I'm going to see how it falls. And even right now as I'm razor cutting the back, I'm making sure that the way I'm cutting it is going to push the hair inward. Mm -hmm. If I were to take this and pull it out and cut it this way, it would flip out a little bit. But by cutting it this way, it wants to flip inward. So it's a very personalized thing. You look at the way that hair is acting and some people, if they maybe have more wave than Chloe, 
by cutting it even the way I just did, it might start to flip out a little bit more. So that's one of those things, again, if you're person, uh, by, person, yeah. person by person, and, and if, if your hairdresser doesn't get it, like, people are going to hate me for saying this, but I'm, I'm going to make it my catchphrase is fire your hairdresser, fire your barber. Like, I hear these horror stories, you know, my barber will not recommend things to me. What should I do? Fire him. <laughs> my, my barber doesn't know this and that. What should I do? Fire him. It's a free market. Yeah. Somebody asked, they have a round face. So do you think that this haircut would look good on them? Chloe, do you think you have a round face? I have an oval face. Okay. But I do have cheeks that make my face look rounder. I don't know. Okay, so I get a lot of people asking me how they should cut their hair or what they should do. And honestly, I think that anybody can pull off anything as long as you have confidence. Like, that's just kind of my thing. Like, if you have the confidence to cut off your hair and be vulnerable with short hair, do it. Like, if you love it, who else cares? Like, I don't care if you have a round face. I don't care if you have a long face. If you rock it, I think that that's the best kind of hairstyle, but that's just my opinion. So, my, my experience is, nine out of 10 people who think they have a round face that's prohibiting them from enjoying a certain hairstyle, Nine out of ten of them don't have a round face. They're just like, oh, I got a fat face. And I'm mm -hmm. like, no, you don't. And then the tenth person who says, oh, I got a round face, they don't care. They know they have a round face, and they just do the haircut anyways. So, you know, you don't want to do anything too extreme. If you, if you do, in fact, have a round face, don't do something that sticks way out on the sides because your head already does that on its own. But, I, I don't know, people get this in their head, they're like, I've got the roundest head, and I'm like, who told you that? And they're like, well, I was in third grade, I got a haircut by this lady <laughs> somewhere, and she said, ooh, you've got a round head. <laughs> and ever since then, I've been insecure about how round my head is. Yeah, if you want it, do it. Hair's hair, it grows back, right? Okay, yeah, somebody asked the same thing with a square face. I think that's the same answer. I think the trouble with that whole line of thinking is like, oh, well, I have this shaped face. As you look in the mirror, you judge yourself, you self-diagnose, and then you go, yeah. okay, I gotta look at these hairstyles and those hairstyles, and the thing is, we, we all have a really skewed version of what we think we look like, and the rest of the world doesn't see you the way you think you see you. Absolutely. And uh, like I said, everybody thinks they have a fat round face, everybody thinks they have a bad jawline, everybody thinks that they look so horrible compared to the rest of the world. Yeah, we do see ourselves completely different than what the world sees. I think we tend to judge ourselves way too much. Um, somebody asked, how was the blonde achieved on the top and what formula is used? I honestly think that if you want blonde hair, you need to go to a stylist who's good um, and pay the money to do so. Some people's hair lifts better than others. Mine fortunately lifts in one session. One long session. Though, one right? long session. My, sessions, my session that I just got out of was three and a half hours and she just did the top of my hair. So she didn't do every piece, and I have short hair, and she mean, she just did the roots. So three and a half hours is uh, what we did today, and the toner that she used is a 9N, but everyone's different. Every, everyone's different. Everybody's hair texture is different. Um, and also, my hair is completely virgin underneath, so like the brown that you see, that's my natural color. I'm going to give you a sick metal part for a minute here. I'll be okay with that. But cut. Would you have to say anything about that, Andrew? About the color? Yeah. No idea. No idea. Andrew doesn't color hair. I don't color hair. But his wife does, and she's really good. That's right. Some of these questions I want to wait till later, because it's about the undercut and the side cut. We can cut quietly and awkwardly like we yeah, usually do, fine. if you'd like. Oh, I get this question all the time. Do you take new clients? Do I? Yeah. Not right now. I'm focusing on building something big and cool and hopefully epic and life changing. So I don't sell my time behind the chair anymore. I pretty much just do haircuts for like friends and acquaintances and I, it's funny enough, I don't even charge for most of my haircuts now. I just do it because I enjoy doing it. <laughs> what was that? Water! <laughs> Where is it? Oh, right here on my forehead. Are you alright? Yeah, I'm fine. I'm keeping that in the video. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was like, it's like a water water. You. you freaked out. Oh. Do you want when a, a girl wears makeup, she can't get water on her face. <laughs> Just don't, kidding. You, don't you use that spray that they use? Yeah, but Would that, that doesn't, help? It doesn't like... 
Water can only trickle down. It can't like stay. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever created some variation of this style on guys' hair? Honestly, I think like the, the dude's hair rendition of this would be like Leonardo DiCaprio in oh, Titanic, right? I love that. Yeah. And I guess I've done one or two of those before, but that is like my absolute favorite kind of haircut to do on a dude. Uh, the thing I like, the haircuts that I love doing right now on guys' hair is hair that moves, just like this hair is moving right now. So fades are cool, but when you do a fade, it's just short. It doesn't do anything. And then you slick the top back, maybe. That's yeah. not fun. I like hair where you pull it out, you cut it to an angle, and you watch it fall and create a shape like we're doing right here. Somebody asked, what was the original inspiration of this haircut? I was looking at like pixie cuts, pixie bobs, blah, blah, blah. Brianna Cisneros has amazing hair, and her hair falls so well. And my hair doesn't have the same texture or anything like her, but... So we've kind of manipulated the haircut, but um, the first picture that I came in with was one of her, one of her haircuts. Yeah. So that, that was the starting inspiration. Uh, only I was afraid to go that short with Chloe the first time. So we did like the, the three inches longer version. Yeah. The, the very safe, scary, ver like not as scary version. Okay. To be honest, I kind of had to like uh, persuade you to cut my hair shorter. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> Which I appreciated. I, I think I appreciated every single step to actually like figure out what I liked and what I didn't like about the cut. And I did appreciate that you suggested for me to wait and figure out what I liked about it. Because what if I were to cut it off and I hated it? Well, I always, I knew that like the first time we cut your hair, I was like, oh, I'm going to go really short on her one of these days. And I always knew I wanted to do that, but... I thought that if we did it right away, it would scare you and you would never do it again. <laughs> well, what did you say? I was like, I think this is the shortest I'll go. And you're we'll like, see. we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> That's what they all say. Yeah. It's true, though. It's I think it's addicting. And there's things that you find you like about certain things. Somebody did ask me if I would ever go like a full pixie. I don't know. I don't know if I can answer that right now. I can't give a yes or a no. I can mess up and then we'll have to do it. Right. I think I'm liking where my hair is at right now. Because I do have a lot of diversity in it. Um, I'm not limited to just one hairstyle. Which I feel like with a pixie you kind of are limited in doing certain things. And I like a lot of body in my hair. I've always been like that, like even when my hair was long, so I'm like a, I like to tease it. I like to give myself that big old like wave thing to come over. So I don't know if, if a really short pixie would be something I'd want to do soon. Have you been enjoying video or do you feel like it's um? More of like a job now. I just got to the point where it stopped being frustrating and scary and difficult. And uh, so now it's fun. That's like, awesome. I, I like the challenge. I like sitting down and trying to figure out where to put the cameras and how to set them up. And What's your favorite part? Do you like actually like recording stuff or do you like editing or? No, editing sucks. I mean, eh. I, okay, so I hate being in front of the camera, but so I guess I would have to say I like editing more, but it gets old. I don't know. It's Same maybe stuff. it does feel kind of like work at times. Well, so here's here's the thing I know about myself is like, I I'm not a perfectionist by any means. I'm very much like I, I want to know all the rules and be able to follow the rules and be able to know. Like I want to know that I can make perfect. Yeah. And then I have no desire to. And then I'm like, all right, cool. Now that I know, now I'm gonna do it wrong. Yeah. And uh, with the video editing, I've been trying to learn how to even just turn this white wall white. Like, it's, you don't think about it to your eyes, it's a white wall, but to the camera, it's like a blue wall and a yellow wall. Yeah, that's... And uh, that's trying, to, trying to get that even white balance is, like, so difficult. Now, now that I got it down and I know how to do it, and I use three different programs to get it done, now I don't really care to do it. Yeah. Now that I know I can, I don't have to. Yeah. What about pictures? Do you still enjoy taking pictures? I do. Do you want your pictures taken today? Yeah. Tight. Awesome. If you were willing... I almost brought my film camera today and I was going to take pictures of you on film, except 
being that we're doing the video and everything, I didn't want to have like a million things in my bag. Yeah. yeah. I've already got two cameras. And... Yeah. Are you kind of wishing you could do more than just like portraits in here, or are you pretty okay with? No, okay. I mean, yeah, I have, I have fun with just the portraits. It's it's been fun, like with with taking pictures and, and, and like portraits of hair. Mm -hmm. A year ago, I thought, well, I pretty much got this. It doesn't really get much better than that. And then the little bit that I've even learned in the last year, I look at what I did a year ago, and I'm like, dang, I sucked. Like, now I'm good. And I know that in another year, I'm going to look at what I'm doing right now and go, yeah. dang, I sucked. <laughs> I think it's cool that you're always trying to, like, venture out and continue to always learn. <clears throat> it's a blessing and a curse. I, I don't know how to stop and just relax. <laughs> I don't know how to take a vacation and not like work on vacation. Yeah. 